Hello everyone and welcome to another Stormworks video. In this video I'm going to be talking a little bit about the logic block components. Um, pretty much I've been found that a lot of you guys have been requesting this as a video as in that you don't completely understand each one of these logic blocks or you're just not aware they exist and on then having a lack of difficulty of using them. So we're going to go ahead straight into this video and just quickly talk about each one of these blocks tell you about the number of inputs, tell you about the on-off inputs, and then tell you about the outputs of each. I've done a little example of each, and then we'll talk you through each one of them step by step. Let's go ahead and get straight started. So first off we have for you is going to be the ABS. ABS block itself is going to be an absolute value, so it's always going to be outputting a positive number. If we were to give it a value now of minus 1, it's going to output a positive number. So whatever number value, it's always going to be positive. Whatever it is, it's going to change that to positive. Next off we have for you is going to be the add. So it's pretty much quite simple in the name. It takes two numerical inputs, outputs one numerical, and then it's going to head and take and add both of them together and output them. So for example, we're going to give this five. We're going to go ahead and give this five also. And you can see it's going to add them together and give you an output of 10. Next off we have for you is going to be an AND. Pretty much this takes two inputs, one output of red of course. And this is going to pretty much only work if you have both of them on. If you turn one of these off, it's going to turn them off. If you have both of them off, it's going to be off. Next off we have for you is going to be the blinker. I've gone ahead in the settings and set this to 0.5 on and 0.5 on, which means it's going to blink off for 0.5 seconds and on for 0.5 seconds. Go ahead, turn it on. As you can see, it's blinking on and off. Next off we have for you is going to be the capacitor. In the capacitor, once again, you can go in the settings, change it. You have a charge time and discharge time. If I go ahead and hold this down, you can see it's now discharged for 5 se 0 0.5 seconds and it's taken 0 0.5 seconds to charge up. Next off we have for you is the clamp. Pretty much this will take a numerical input up with a numerical value and it clamps it between the value that you set. I've set it between 1 and 10 which means that it's only going to output numbers between 1 and 10. If I was to give it a 11, it's only going to output 10. If I was to give it a 0, it's only going to output 1. That's it. Anywhere between that value that you set. Next off we have for use delay. Quite simple in the name. It delays the signal to whatever block you can connect to it. I've delayed by 0 0.5 seconds, which means when I click it, it delays it and then sends it off to that numerical value. Next off we have for you is going to be the greater than. So pretty much if if a is greater than B, it sends a signal. So for example, if we give A4, B3, that means that 4 is greater than 3, it's going to send a signal. If we go to here and give this 2, which means it's less than 3, it's not going to send a signal. Next off we have for you is going to be the less than block. Once again, exactly the same as the greater than, however, this is now the less than, which means if we give it a 2, which is less than 3, it's going to send a signal. If we get a value of more than 3, it's not going to send a signal. Next off is going to be the memory register. Memory register takes a numerical value, outputs that numerical value. However, you do have two options. One is to set that value and one is to clear that value. So if we were to get a value of 5, you can see here it's not, not outputting anything. That's because we haven't set a value. Once we go ahead and set that value, it now output 5. It doesn't matter if we go ahead and change this value. It's always going to remain at 5. Unless we go ahead and clear that value, which then brings it back to 0. You can go ahead in the settings and change that reset value to whatever you want. Next off, not. Once again, quite simple in the description. When you're not pressing this button, it's outputting a signal. If you go ahead and turn this on, it's now not outputting a signal. It does the opposite of pretty much whatever you want it to do. Um, we also have a numerical uh, box or number box or number component. Set this to whatever number value you want. I've set this to 1, which means that now whatever we connect to, it will output a value of 1. Next off, we have the numerical inverter. Pretty much inverts anything, any number you give it. So if we were to give it a 1, it's now going to give us a negative 1. Give it a negative 1, and you should see it gives us a positive 1. Next off, we have for you is going to be the numerical junction. Numerical junction is quite nice. It takes an input number, then asks for that number to two different sources. Though depending on what you have the toggle button on or off as, then it will send it to those signals. So for example, we give it a value of 5. You can see because we have it off, it's going to send it to the off box. 
if we go ahead and toggle it to on, it's not going to send that value not to that box anymore, but it's not going to switch that value to the next box. Next up we have for you is going to be the numerical switch box. This is probably one of the most used box I use personally. This takes two numerical inputs and outputs as one. Now depending on which one you want, which number you want to output will be depending on what you have the signal as. If you have it on, then it's going to output the one that you have as on connected to and then if you have it off it's going to output the off number so we're going to set the off number to five as you can see here oh sorry that was actually the on number so we're going to set the on number to five and then set the off number to eight off number as you can see is now being set sent through if we were to go ahead and switch it on you can see now five is going to be sent through next off simple on signal sends on signal to whatever component you connect to next off we have for use a or b or being the keyword um, the OR box pretty much takes either one of those signals and then controls the output. So whether it doesn't matter if you select the left one or the right one, it's still going to use uh, use the signal and send it through. So if we have A on, it's going to send it through. If we send B on, it's going to send B, B through. It takes two inputs and outputs one. Either one of them can be on and will work. Uh, next up we have for you is going push to toggle. As it says in the name, if you use a push button, it will then send a toggle signal through to whatever component. So we push that button once, it now has toggled that signal on. If we go push it again, it now toggles it off. Uh, we then have the threshold gate. Threshold gate in the settings, you can go ahead and, and set it up. Pretty much it takes any numerical value number. Um, and then once it reads that it's in between that set numbers that you have set. So for example, I've set it between one and 10 for this tutorial. It's then gonna output a signal. So for example, if we go and set it to 11, which is above what we've set it to, it's not gonna output anything. But as soon as it drops in between the number value that we've set, for example, five is between one and 10, it's now gonna output a signal. Very good for setting up distance sensors. So for example, if you connect this, which is gonna be your distance sensor, to the threshold gate, to, for example, a light, for example, or even a uh, buzzer, you can go ahead and set that up so that if the distance sensor detects anything between zero and 50 meters, it's going to go ahead and output a number, or I mean a on-off signal. Next off, we have for use the simple up-down component. Up-down component works exactly the same as a lever. It has one output, which is the numerical value, and two external controls or inputs, um, which are toggles or signals. So if we go ahead and give it uh, a signal to push it up, you can see here toggling it or pushing it to go up, you can see this number of values going up. If we go ahead and hold that down, that number value is now starting to drop down again. Exactly the same as a lever, just as a component value. And then lastly, we have a Zor, uh, or Hor, however you want to pronounce it. Pretty much what this does is it goes ahead and it will only set, turn that signal on if both, if, I'm um, sorry, if only one of these are on. So if we have both of them off, it's not going to output. If both of them on, it's not going to output. As you can see here, press one, it's not outputting something. If both of them on, nothing. If both of them off, nothing. Um, quite nice and useful uh, if you want to set up a little bit more complex systems. And that's pretty much about it. Um, I've covered more or less the basic ones. I haven't covered the uh, more advanced ones, for example, like the PIDs and things like that, um, and an exponents and, and you know those kind of blocks. Uh, but I'll keep that for another video and we'll see how we get on with that. Um, pretty much for upcoming videos, um, just to give you a quick idea, guys, while I'm here, um, in the next couple of days, hopefully I will, should be doing a step-by-step -step tutorial for a helicopter uh, here in advanced mode, and we should be able to get that set up. And that should be probably a two or three part episode. Uh, and then we'll also be thinking about doing a step-by-step uh, -step submarine build, also in advanced mode. Um, I haven't quite decided on that one just yet. Uh, so please do let me know in the comments if you look forward or you would like to see that, a step-by-step -step submarine build uh, here in advanced mode in Stormworks. And that pretty much concludes this video. Um, as always, guys, I hope you've enjoyed it, um, found it somewhat uh, informative and useful, and hopefully you've learned something from this video. Um, don't forget to hit that like and subscribe button. Uh, follow me on Twitter um, for any future content and updates. Uh, and then I look forward to seeing you in the next video.